In my previous video um, about finding pi by Archimedes method, I actually did a logical shortcut. I just wanted to simplify the presentation, but uh, I think it's important to, to understand the issues and to get it really correct. What we did was we took a circle and we're trying to find the circumference of the circle based on a radius of 1. Okay, And so uh, if we take the ratio of the circumference to the diameter, that gives us the value of pi. And we approximated the circumference by finding the perimeter of an inscribed polygon. We started with a six-sided polygon, a hexagon, and then started doubling the sides. So we went from 6 to 12 to 24 to 48, etc. And notice that when we do this process, we will get closer and closer to the perimeter of the circle or the circumference of the circle. Um, but what we know is that the actual circumference of the circle is at every stage greater than the value of the perimeter that we've come up with. It gets closer and closer, but we just know that it's greater than. And you might wonder, well, how much greater? Uh, and so can we really rely on that as to know that we have all the correct digits? How do we know that the, the digits won't just keep on growing if we went further? Um, a more logically convincing way to find pi and to know that we have all the digits correct is if we could find both an, uh, an inside approximation and an outside approximation. So we can sort of squeeze the value of our actual circumference between uh, a low approximation and a high approximation. So as we let those get closer and closer together, we know not just that the circumference is somewhere greater, but it's actually between two values that are getting very, very close together. And so that will allow us to uh, pinpoint the value of pi with more confidence. Okay. Well, Archimedes, when he originally did this, he came up with an entirely different approach to finding the uh, perimeter of the exterior polygon, going from a 6-sided to a 12-sided to a 24-sided. That process that he came up with, we, we came up with one method for doing it for the interior polygon, and he came up with two methods, one for the interior, one for the exterior. And it was quite laborious. Um, in fact, our method for the interior is, I think, if you go back and read the historical literature, you'll see uh, we did it a simpler way than he did it. But we're doing essentially the same thing, just a different way. There's an easy way to get the perimeter of the exterior polygon, and that's to uh, look at similar triangles, or similar figures, I should say. I have a scale factor here called K, and notice that if I change the value of K, I can scale up the polygon that I have inside the circle, and I can come up with a polygon that's outside the circle. Okay. Now right here I have it just so that I can scale this by hand and approximate that. What I'd like to do is to figure out what is the scale factor for a particular polygon like this uh, to, to go from knowing the, say, the side length here of the interior po uh, polygon to this side length of this exterior polygon. Okay. In this case, it's somewhere around 1.16, but we're just doing that by eyeball. Okay. Notice that we can come up with this if we look at uh, the idea of similar figures, if you've taken a geometry class, you've uh, learned about that. And notice that the distance to, uh, from the center out to the midpoint of the edge of this interior polygon is what we called, in the last video, we called it A. And the distance from here out to the midpoint of the edge of the outer polygon is simply the radius of the circle. I've labeled it here R for the radius of the circle. In the previous video, we set R equal to 1 just to simplify things, and we'll do that again. But in general, it's like the ratio of R to A is the ratio of this distance compared to this distance, and that's going to be our scale factor that we want. 
Okay, so instead of having to just guess around at k, let's actually set the value of k. So I'm going to come down here to this input uh, area at the bottom, and if I say k is equal to r over a, let's see what we get. Okay, our little slider disappeared because we redefined k now. And notice that we have uh, we have now set the the polygon so it's exactly tangent to the circle at all these points. Also notice that if we have scaled up each side by a factor of k, then we have scaled up the perimeter, which is a six times the uh, length of the side, and so the perimeters are also scaled up by the same factor. So here's the process. When in our spreadsheet process, when we're actually calculating the value of the perimeter of our polygon inside the circle, to find the polygon outside the circle, the perimeter of the polygon outside the circle, we just simply take our previous value and multiply it by the ratio of r over a. By the way, since we let r equal 1 for our calculation, the, the number we could use is simply 1 over a. But that's where the 1 comes from. I'm just showing you here. The radius here is equal to the radius out to here, which plays the same role for the exterior polygon as a plays for the interior polygon. Okay, let's use this insight and modify our spreadsheet and uh, get a more um, rock-solid uh, value for pi. Okay, here's the spreadsheet calculation we did in the previous video. And I've changed the headers up here a little bit. Uh, instead of just calling this column P for the perimeter of our polygon, I said P, parenthesis, in. This is the perimeter of the inscribed polygon. Let's move over a little bit here. This value, this was the value of pi. It's the ratio of the perimeter, or approximation to pi, I should say. This is the ratio of the perimeter over the diameter, uh, which is going to approximate the circumference over the diameter for actually pi on the circle. But this time I just put a little in beside it to say this is, again, from the interior polygon. I've added two more columns here. This is for the exterior, the outside, the circumscribed uh, polygon. Remember we just said um, the scale factor to get from the interior to the exterior polygon is uh, found by multiplying this value by r over a. And since the radius is 1, I'm going to multiply this by 1 over a. So let's do that. So over here I say equals 1 over a. a is this number here. And then multiply it by the previous perimeter, and that will give us our new perimeter. Notice that's a larger number than the interior one, which is what we expect. And if I then find the ridge of the perimeter to the diameter, I just say equals this perimeter divided by 2, which is uh, the diameter, remember. The radius is 1, so the diameter is 2. And so that's a large value of pi. I should say an oversized value of pi. Here's our undersized value of pi. Let's go over here. Let's expand this out like we did before and put more digits there as far as we can get. Notice we have just zeros out there beyond a certain point. We've run out of digits, so let's back off. And there, okay. Let's take both of these values here, these actually not values, take both of these formulas here and propagate them down and see what we get. All right. Notice down here we came to 3.14159265358910. Here's 8981. So we're still not uh, too close enough together. So let's go a few more rows here. I'm just going to, here, let's go all the way, select all of these. If I hit the shift key and hold this, that'll extend that. Okay. And let's go down a few more rows and see if we can finally get the 
values to be consistent. And there we go. Notice we just needed a couple more rows there. And so this says 8, 9, 7, 9, 8, 9, 7, 9, and it stays fixed. So we now can be very confident, and this row on down is not making any more progress. Let's just take those out. So since the interior and exterior polygons now agree, we know that the actual value of pi is between these two numbers, and therefore we can say with confidence that the actual value of pi to this number of digits is uh, the value shown, 3.14159265358979. The digits continue on, but at least to this degree of accuracy, we can be confident we know pi.